Wake up. It's Brian and Tracy. All right, out of that truck. That's the brand new song from Carrie Underwood, by the way. Um, okay, so married and doing something special for Valentine's Day? Well, that's great. Nobody cares. Seriously, <laughs> this this didn't even factor you in. Someone polled 1,000 millennials and Gen Zers who are actively dating and looked at what they, uh, what the perfect Valentine's Day date looks like in 2024. And as it turns out, it really hasn't changed a whole lot. They're, we're still pretty traditional. Yeah. 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 Uh, the perfect date starts with flowers or a gift and mm-hmm. uh, and and one of you should be picking the other person up don't make them meet you out somewhere right yeah. all right meet me over at burger king and we'll have us a little dinner unless yeah, you're anyways, 12 uh, you're after 12, that okay. yeah after that dinner and a movie mm-hmm. and then uh some some form of togetherness uh, as mm-hmm. they say uh so you know it also looked at the top plans for people staying in for Valentine's Day. 61% say they plan on watching a movie together. Mm-hmm. 59% will cook a nice dinner. And mm-hmm. and uh, so there you go. It's still pretty traditional as far as romance goes. I like that. Yeah, privacy. You know, you don't have to go, always go out fanfare. It's the thought that counts. You can create something out of nothing, really, yeah. and on a very easy budget. It's just all how much effort you put into your loved one. That's right. Okay, uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing uh, those requests and dedications for Valentine's Day. So if you have a special someone in your life, a special Valentine, and you want to request a special song or do a a dedication, a shout out to them, then then go ahead and text it into us because we're collecting these uh, Mm -hmm. dedications and song requests. And then tomorrow morning on the Wake Up Morning Show, we're going to be playing a lot of these uh, songs and dedications back so uh 936-295-4102 that's our number you can text it to us 936-295-4102 and then join us tomorrow morning for valentine's day on the wake up morning show and on our community spotlight this morning let's talk a little bit about the new ms walk that is coming up on saturday march the 23rd in the woodlands this is uh the regional walk from montgomery and walker counties So you're invited to come take part in this unforgettable display of support and love surrounding people living with multiple sclerosis. Uh, We have uh, the MS community coming to life like never before. This will be happening at the Town Green Park at 8.30 that morning, and uh, you're going to be there, Tracy. I'm going to be there helping out and um, interviewing people, and I'm excited about that. And this is my third walk with MS. MS, MS Walk and National um, MS Society. And it, it just shows that there's a good level of support here yep. in our counties, including here in Walker County. And and I'm really thankful for that because unless you know somebody who has the disease, you don't know about it. Yep. And then so it just helps to give that helping hand. And a cure is definitely on the line. Okay. We have details on our community events page at ksam1017.com. Our community spotlight is brought to you by Wiesner of Huntsville. Scotty McCreary, Cabin of Solo, 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. Good morning, Carlos with you on the Midday Show. Your weather forecast coming right up. Also got Brantley Gilbert and Carrie Underwood around the corner on this day, February the 14th, Valentine's Day 2024. Well, if you're single out there like myself, I'm sorry, I know it's a rough day because you see all the Valentine's Day content all over your internet. But, you know, not everything is the corny love stuff. Some of it has a healthy dose of stupidity, like this. The Art Collective, MSCHF, have put out a WD-40 cologne. They put out a WD-40 cologne last year. It sold out quickly, but they recently restocked it and added a new perfume that smells like the cleaning solution, Fabuloso. Wow. There's also a new dating app called Score. And that's not just a reference to landing a date. You must at least have at least a 675 credit score to use it. It's a dating app for people with only good to excellent credit. It hopes to help raise awareness about the importance of finances in relationships. See, that's practical. And apparently so-called candy salads are going viral on TikTok. It's a modern spin on the random candy dish that everyone's grandma used to have sitting out. It's just open, loose, mixed candy in a dish on the coffee table calling it candy salad now see at least we have a name for it now because yeah my my nana had that growing up when i was growing up and i would be at her house all the time i just called it candy in a dish because that's what it was people tracy bird with the keeper of the stars part of 90s at noon on 101.7 k sam 
Good morning, I'm Carlos Zimmerman, your Southeast Texas weather forecast is coming up. And more 90s country on the way from Lone Star and Vince Gill, plus Mark Chestnut still to come this hour. Well, uh, Brian shared this story with me earlier this morning uh, before I took over the reins of uh, the on-air airwaves, if you will. And uh, I read this and I, w- I couldn't believe what I was reading. All right, m- me being the sports guy around here. This is just intriguing. So uh, I don't know if Brian Adams is listening right now, but you and I might need to brush up on our cornhole broadcasting skills because two kids from Colorado were just awarded the first ever athletic scholarships to play Division I cornhole. Their names are Jackson Remick and Gavin Heyman. They went to Thunder Ridge High School near Denver, which has a strong cornhole program, apparently. They're obviously cornhole prodigies. They won their first ever high school championship together in 2021 and then another one in 2022. And on National Signing Day last week, they signed letters of intent to play D1 Cornhole for Winthrop University in South Carolina. They're part of the Big South Conference. And the school hasn't said how much the scholarship it's for is for, but it's not a full ride. Their new coach at Winthrop thinks full ride scholarships for Cornhole could happen eventually, though. You know, Cornhole is one of our favorite things to do uh, at Northside. So I'm probably going to reach out to my buddies Jonathan, Dylan, and our college and young adults and music minister Micah. I think if I think if you never used college eligibility, we could make this happen. <laughs> Let's get a cornhole team together. Let's go play D1 cornhole. We can say we were D1 athletes. Are we though? Probably not. Warren Zider is in Pretty Little Poison on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KCM. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Big Glenn Edwards. Your forecast is coming right up. Now, I don't know if you heard about this or not, but <laughs> listen up. Multiple people in Mesa, Arizona called 911 just the other day to report alligators swimming around in a lake at a city park. Uh, you know, it kind of sounds like a prank, right? Yeah, but it's anything but because... The city actually pranking them. So it turns out that city officials there in Mesa, Arizona, uh, recently added some realistic foam alligators. Yeah, they look like real. And they did so so uh, birds and turtles could sit on them. Uh huh. Now, a few of the 911 callers were fully convinced that they were real. Matter of fact, even one woman claimed that a gator lashed onto her boyfriend's fishing line. They're not real. Anyway, uh, despite the confusion, doesn't sound like the city of Mesa plans on doing anything to remove them anytime soon. Matter of fact, they just doubled down because they added two fake hippos to the lake as well. 